In this video, we're going to talk about the most underutilized yet most important and inexpensive tool when it comes to pond management. Hi guys, I'm Wes Goldsmith, Fish Management Specialist here at Aquatic Control. And today we're going to talk about fish harvest in your private pond. So why should you be harvesting fish in your private pond? Simply put, it's to reduce the competition and allow more resources to be spread among the remaining individuals in your pond. So what fish should you be harvesting from your pond? Well, this really depends on what your goals are. Every pond owner has different goals for their fishery. So if you're trying to manage for trophy bass, you're gonna, your harvest is gonna look different than if you're trying to manage for trophy bluegill. In general, if you're trying to improve the growth of your bass, your harvest is probably gonna lean more within the bass population. You need to thin out the bass so the remaining individuals have more food and more habitat. Same thing with trophy bluegill. If you're trying to manage for trophy bluegill, you're not gonna have to harvest as many bass typically, but you do wanna keep your bluegill numbers thinned out and that's gonna permit better growth for the bluegill in your pond. If you're looking for more of a balanced population in your pond, you really wanna focus on whatever seems to be the most abundant. <clears throat> for a lot of people, this is overabundant or stunted largemouth bass. So if all of your bass or a high percentage of your bass are say 10 to 12 inches, that's where you wanna start your harvest. If most of them are 12 to 14 inches, Again, that's where you're gonna to wanna to start your harvest. So you wanna start fishing specifically for that species. And if that's the case, you wanna lay off on your bluegill harvest. You want to promote your bluegill in that case. If your pond is already in a balanced situation where you have several size classes of largemouth bass and several size classes of bluegill, then your harvest should encompass both bluegill and largemouth bass and it should encompass a wider range of sizes. So you can harvest largemouth anywhere from eight to say 14, 15, 16 inches, and you're gonna meet these weight thresholds that we're gonna talk about here in a second. So how many fish should you be harvesting from your pond? Well, that's not an easy question to answer. Every pond is quite a bit different based on productivity, acreage, and things of that nature, but we're gonna give you a couple rules of thumb to go by and to get you started. So largemouth bass, generally you wanna be harvesting around 20 to 25 pounds per surface acre. That's gonna get you started and you're gonna figure out over time with your pond whether that needs to be increased or decreased. But the other portion to think about is that that's kind of under the assumption you're already in a balanced situation. Most people are not. So if you're bass crowded and you have a lot of bass that are all in a similar size category, you need to shoot for over that 25 pounds per acre. You need to be shooting for 30, 40, sometimes 50 pounds per acre to really move the needle. So when you hear these poundage rates to be harvesting, you may be thinking, that sounds like a lot of fish. Am I going to take too many out? Just focus on the surface acreage and give it a shot. I don't want you to be concerned with over harvesting when you're in a severely bass crowded situation. So if you're extremely bass crowded, for the first year or two, don't worry so much about over harvest. Hit them hard. If you catch any really big fish, let them go, but hit those stunted size classes as hard as you can for a year or two. For bluegill, we're typically looking at anywhere from 200 to 400 bluegill that you could take out per surface acre. Again, this is hugely dependent on how productive your pond is. And it also is reliant on your pond already being in a balanced situation. So if you're bluegill crowded and you feel that your bluegill are not growing over five, five and a half inches, something along those lines, you're gonna need to remove even higher numbers than that because there are so many bluegill out there, their food source is spread thin. They can't grow how you want them to. Oftentimes in this situation, you're actually gonna be better off to introduce a few more predators and let them do some of this work for you. Sometimes there's gonna be an exception to those overabundant size categories. So again, if all your bass are 10 to 12 inches or 12 to 14, 
occasionally you're going to want to release a fish or two in that stunted size category if they look really healthy. So we're going to introduce the term relative weight. And what that means is any given fish has a certain length and based on that species, there's an equation that shows what a healthy version of that fish should weigh. So the best example I can tell you is a 12 and a half inch largemouth bass should weigh one pound. So if that, if we catch a 12 and a half inch largemouth and he weighs less than a pound, he's going to be less than ideal and less than 100% relative weight. If he weighs over a pound, we're going to know he's doing really well and he has over 100% relative weight. So if you catch a fish in that stunted size category and he looks really healthy, he's got a thick gut, small mouth, he's filled out back through the tail, you measure and weigh him and you find out that he has a really high relative weight, it's okay to go ahead and release that fish. What you're doing is you're trying to promote the better fish in your pond. So we want to take out all the fish that have low relative weights and if you catch some that have higher relative weights, we want to promote those fish. We want to go ahead and let them go. So to give you a, a real life example of relative weight like we just talked about, we went ahead and caught a couple fish out of the pond here that needs a little harvest done. And so we're gonna use relative weight today to decide whether we need to harvest or release. So we're gonna get started here. All right. So we're gonna measure this fish you don't have to do this to the nearest tenth, but on our measuring boards, we have that capability. So we're gonna go ahead and be as precise as we can. 11.7. See if it'll hold still. 0.83. So we're gonna go ahead and look on our relative weight chart here. 11.7. 0.83 is exactly 100%. So you can see this fish has a little bit of a gut, uh, nothing crazy. But you can see this fish is extremely thick all the way through the tail. Um, and so for this pond, our goal is 100% relative weight. So this fish just barely makes the mark and is going to get to go back to the pond today. So we'll check this other fish out and see whether we need to remove it or put him back. So when you're doing your measuring, you want to put, make sure the mouth's closed, pinch the tail. We're at 11.5. We're at 0.75. So 11.5, that is right in between 90 and 100% relative weight, probably around 94, 95%. So again, this fish still looks relatively healthy um, and above 90 is not bad, but for the goals of this pond, like I said, our goal is 100% relative weight and higher. So even though this fish appears to be doing okay, when you're in a balanced situation, you're still gonna be removing fish that look to be healthy. That's a good sign that your pond's doing okay. But So today we're still gonna go ahead and harvest this fish. So if you've stuck around with us this long, we wanted to just throw out a couple extra bonus tips for you on harvesting fish in your pond. So a lot of what we run into is pond owners being scared to let other people come and harvest fish from their pond. They're typically worried about over harvest. And obviously today's video is teaching you how important this can be. So our first bonus tip is to invite your family and friends over, let them come over, teach them what you want to be harvested from your pond. If you have a lot of 12 to 14 inch bass, let them know that your expectation for them is to remove 12 to 14 inch bass when they catch them. If you need to help bolster your bluegill population and you don't want to be harvesting any bluegill at that time, make sure they know that. But don't be afraid to allow friends and family to come help achieve your harvest goals. Some customers have 10 acre ponds. It takes a lot of harvest when you start to do the math. So. A great way to achieve your harvest goals is to allow your friends and family to come help you. So tip number two would be consider using a pond and lake management company to help you meet some of these harvest goals. They can do a couple different things. For one, if you just have an electrofishing survey done, 
they're part of that survey is going to be helping you determine your harvest goals, what you need to meet each year to reach where you're trying to go with your fishery. But number two, they can come and just simply remove largemouth bass if that's what you really need to harvest. So if you have a lot of stunted largemouth bass, they can come and shock and just only scoop up the largemouth bass and then they'll give you a weight at the end of that service and you'll know where you need to pick up from there. They're generally not going to reach your entire goal, but they can take out large chunks at a time when you have them out to do that. What I really want you guys to take away from this video is how important harvesting fish is going to be when you're managing your pond. We do hundreds of electrofishing surveys and almost always the top priority is harvest. We recommend stocking, fish feeders, habitat. We've done videos on a lot of this stuff but the top priority is almost always harvesting fish from your pond. You can do all the stocking, you can fix everything else, but if you have stunted populations and you're not harvesting the right species at the right time, a lot of those other management tools are gonna have very low success. You're gonna see small changes where harvest, followed by the rest of these recommendations, are gonna really change what's going on in your fishery. If you guys have any questions or need help determining what your harvest plan should be, feel free to give us a call or reach out through our website.